Ian Spanier here for Westcott. Today we're going to be showcasing a couple of great light solutions. Portable lights that have strobe as well as ambient light, how to use one, how to use the other, and how to combine both. We're here today with singer-songwriter Travis Howard, and we're going to be doing some portraits in a multi-light situation. We've got great ambient light, which you can see coming from all these great windows, but we're also going to showcase a very cool portable solution for a small travel light that allows us to control the light, and then we're going to take it one step further and we're going to showcase the portable light solution with the ambient and how those two things can be combined. So we just completed some really nice natural light portraits. The downside with this is that even though it seems like a lot of light in here, we're really shooting at a pretty high ISO. The other problem that we have when we're shooting in a situation like this is that the light's gonna change. So if we're gonna be shooting all day, what do we wanna do to get around that issue is control the light. So one great way to control the light is to bring our own lights into this situation. So we're gonna use a strobe to deal that. Today we're gonna work with the Westcott FJ200. On the FJ200 is a 24 inch deep silver umbrella we put diffusion on this to create a softer quality of light, but the silver is still going to give a nice little pop to it, which fits my style really well. The other aspect of this umbrella is going to, it's going to create a consistent, beautiful light, beautiful quality of light on Travis, no matter which situation we're in. So let's showcase that right now. This is always when it comes down to personal preference. So when we look at the portraits that are lit with our FJ200 and umbrella combination, we do see there's quite a bit of shading underneath this hat. I don't always mind that so much, but some people might. So this would be a great situation to bring in a reflector to just add a little bit of light. It also creates a second catch light in the eye, which is somewhat appealing to uh, this kind of a portrait as well when you're dealing with a tight face character, all those kind of things. So I'm going to bring in a Westcott 5-in-1 reflector and let's see if that improves the image. When you're working with a reflector, you're going to have a change in the exposure. So we can do this by testing with the light meter or we can just take a frame, take a look at it and see what we want to change. Right now I have the silver reflector going, so it's going to be quite a bounce coming off of that key light. So let's see how it looks and decide if we want to change it. It's great right there, Travis, good. Okay, actually looks pretty good. So what we can look at here is the difference between no fill and a fill. Now, again, it comes down to personal preference. When I see this a bit of light underneath Travis's hat, I actually don't like that very much. I actually thought that the shading was a little bit better. I also know, just because I'm used to looking at these files on camera, what I can do in post, how much shadows I can open up in post, and I might make a judgment based on that. That said, when you have the information in there in the file, you can always make it darker. It's a lot easier to make things darker than it is to brighten when you're talking about the work you do in post. I do like the second catch light in Travis's eye. That's kind of nice. So yeah, it's really just a personal preference thing, but having options is always a good thing. Never hurts to capture a few frames like this just so we can choose. So now that we've got some really great captures as far as tight faces go, we're going to pull back and I'm going to show you guys how I would utilize a strobe light combined with ambient to create a beautiful scene. So whenever you're in a situation where you 
want to combine strobe light and ambient light. I treat it very much the same way that I would if I was doing the entire thing with strobe lights. I want to find out what is my background light going to be first, and then I want to bring in my key light and create the shape of the light and the quality of the light to my taste. So first thing I'm gonna do is read the ambient light with a light meter. That's gonna allow me to understand what this light looks like. Our eye sees it a certain way, but the camera sees very differently. So we need to be able to measure these things in order to do it properly. So I'm gonna guesstimate that we're somewhere around ISO 400 for this scene. That's just in my mind where I think we'd be. I'm gonna want to have this ambient light to be about two stops under my key. Again, that's my personal preference as far as a ratio is concerned. You could also do it where you match the key light to your ambient light, any combination that really fits your style. So I'm gonna take a reading now, and it is falling pretty much what I thought. So we're sitting around 28, 28 and a half to four at ISO 400 at 1 25th of a second. So I'm gonna maybe jump up just a little bit more in ISO and go to 640. And that puts me a little bit closer to four even, maybe four and a half on the brighter side. Then after that's complete, I'm gonna take a, another reading of my, key, my strobe light. That strobe light is gonna allow me to really shape the light that falls on Travis's face. With a small source, we don't have a huge spread of light. So what this combination is gonna do is it's gonna put some light in this area, which would be quite dark, just with a small source like this. And we're not gonna lose this great quality of light that's gonna be created from the strobe. So I'm gonna switch my meter over to reading a strobe. We're still at ISO 640. Now, since I'm in a higher ISO, of course, that strobe is gonna seem a lot more powerful. So don't be surprised if your first reading is quite high, even if your strobe is not set too high. It's that ISO that makes the difference. Okay, so my strobe is now set to F8. That means that I'm gonna set my camera based on the strobe reading. And that is how that ratio works. So the strobe is reading F8 on Travis's face. The rest of the area is F4, F4 and a half, which means that sort of basically two stop ratio is gonna be the difference between this ambient light and the strobe. So here's our first frame. I'm always gonna look at this to make my quick assessment of what exactly might need to change, if anything. So what I can see with our 24 inch deep silver umbrella, we're still creating a light source that's pretty small and pretty honed in, but maybe it's not pointed in the right direction. So when Travis was standing, our light was focused perfectly on his face with a nice even spread. Right now, when I look at it more pulled back, I'm actually surprised at how much that light is spreading. So that is a good thing but now we really have to control where it's spreading. We lose all our ambient in that corner. If you think about it, there's no direct light hitting that corner. So of course we're losing some light there. So I'm gonna flare my umbrella towards that corner just a little bit so that this area has a little bit more even lighting feeling more like this area. Now that I've moved the umbrella a little bit, the scene is much more evenly lit, but I don't feel like it quite has the drama that I like. So there's a few ways I can control that. I can control it through ISO, I can control it through shutter speed, and I can control it through the angle of the light. So any of those three options are available to me. Travis, look in here one more time. Good. The first move I made was to drop to ISO 400. As much as I rely on a meter to understand and control and complete an image the right way, I will always take feel over technical numbers. So I'll first do the technical numbers and then if I see something I wanna change, then I'll make a feel change. The other thing I'm gonna move here is that light. I feel like it could be a little bit more dramatic if I change the angle of it so that we have a little bit more 
uh, shadows built in. Now that I've made these changes, I feel like it's in a much better place as far as the way that I'd like to shape the light, the way that I want to control both the light that I'm controlling that's artificial and the way that I'm controlling the ambient light. It might sound strange to think of ambient light as something you are controlling, but it absolutely is something you control. And once you know how to control it, it's, in, it's a key element to creating great images. So what hopefully you can see here is that we're utilizing everything to our advantage. We are controlling and shaping light with our strobe and we're taking advantage of this great ambient light to fill in light in the scene. Once we get to post, then we really can move these things up and down, decide where light is gonna fall, where shadows are gonna fall heavier. But more than anything, we now have a direction of our light. And what I mean by that is that by utilizing a strobe, we are focusing light in a direction that tells a great story. So I was walking through the hallway. We had literally just packed all our gear. As Joe McNally says, last thing to ever pack is your camera. So my camera was still out. So I very quickly threw an FJ80 on an S bracket, same 24 inch silver umbrella with the diffusion. Asked Travis before he ran off to just stand for me for one second. We're gonna shoot a really quick portrait just cause this wall was too cool and had to do it. So the beauty of something this compact and portable is really complete control over the light. If you noticed, I was holding the light just above my lens to really have kind of a, a front down angle to it, but I could do any angle I really want. So with Travis standing here, if I wanted to make this more of a side lit portrait, it's so simple for me to just hold the light out to the side instead and just get a totally different look. So if you're somebody that likes to shoot portraits on the fly, this is a great little solution. Whether you're working with the FJ80 or the FJ200, it's a very hand-holdable solution for lighting on the fly. So you can see that we just were able to quickly change even the lighting situation from one to another because of the slight change of an angle, and that was it. So as you can see, the 24 inch um, deep silver umbrella, the deep white umbrella with diffusion, both great options for on the fly, portable, a very beautiful light that you can utilize to control and create a scene anywhere you go. I just threw this thing together in my backpack. I'm getting ready to go on my next trip. I've got the FJ200 in my bag and I've got the 24 inch umbrella and I'm ready to go.